What can I say about the iPhone 6 that you don't know or haven't already assumed? Not much, actually. <laughs> it's running iOS 8, it has a great camera, a thinner design, and a handful of features that make it different from last year's iPhone. This year, Apple has bumped up the display size and released two models. We have the 4.7 inch iPhone 6 and the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Plus. But if you've been paying attention to the rumor mill leading up to the release, these two models might not have been a surprise. That being said, there are still some things that I'd like to touch on in this video, but instead of creating two reviews, I think it's safe to combine them so that you can find out which one is right for you. Welcome to my review of the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. Obviously, Apple has aimed at two very different personalities with these two sizes. The iPhone 6 Plus is without a doubt considered a phablet in my eyes, while the iPhone 6 is probably a strong candidate for the average consumer. One is bigger, and the other is bigger than bigger. Though it's not necessarily the 5.5 inch display on the iPhone 6 Plus that makes it a large device. It's actually very large because of its body and how it is designed. But if you'd like to check out my unboxing videos on either device, I'll leave links down below for that. First off, let's take a look at specifications. The iPhone 6 is packing a 4.7 inch display with a resolution of 1334 by 750, giving it 326 pixels per inch. We also have a dual core Apple A8 chip clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, one gigabyte of RAM, an 1810 milliamp hour battery, and up to 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Now, when it comes to the iPhone 6 Plus, it features the same internal specifications along with a larger 2915 milliamp hour battery, optical image stabilization on the rear camera and a 5.5 inch 1920 by 1080 display with 401 pixels per inch. Aside from the internal specifications, there's one obvious difference with this year's iPhone. It has a completely different design. Now the lock button has been relocated to the side of the device, which will make it easier to access due to the larger sizes involved here, but everything else is basically the same. We have the volume buttons and mute switch on the other side, and you'll find the microphone, speaker grill, lightning port, and three 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom. Apple has slimmed down the design and went with something that closely resembles the fifth generation iPod Touch, iPad Mini, and iPad Air. I'm a big fan of thinner, but sometimes we must sacrifice certain things to get there. Now, I'm not going to make this a review about durability because honestly, I have not used these devices long enough to tell you how durable they are and how they will hold up over time. Many of you may be wondering, hey Dom, does the iPhone 6 Plus really bend? And I'm not going to get too in depth with that I can tell you that my iPhone 6 Plus has not bent yet, but I will leave an article linked down below with my full opinion on the matter. It's kind of lengthy, so get ready for that, but it definitely explains exactly how I feel about the whole bend gate issue. Maybe I'll do another review in six to eight months down the road to account for durability, and if that's something that you'd like to see, feel free to leave this video a thumbs up. Anyway, because of the slim design, we now have a protruding camera, and I know most people cringed at the thought of this, but it's really not that big of a deal. You'll get over it very quickly, I promise. I'm a big fan of the design happening here though. It's thin and sleek, and the display panel is covered by glass that has a very elegant curve along the edges and gives the entire device a seamless look. Though as you may notice, this curved edge design is going to be problematic if you prefer to have screen protectors that extend to the edge of the glass because, well, there is no edge. All of that said, I do like the design and I'm always a fan of buying an iPhone that doesn't look exactly like its predecessor. So what about camera performance? I gotta be straight up here. Even though this is only an eight megapixel camera capable of shooting up to 1080p video at 30 or 60 frames per second, it's still likely one of the best cameras on a smartphone. For some reason, Apple always excels in this department. Pictures are crisp and vivid, though low light performance isn't all that great, but in great lighting, this is the best smartphone camera that you can currently get, at least in my opinion. Another useful feature on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus is the addition of 240 frames per second slow-mo video at 720p. It just looks fantastic. Now the iPhone 6 Plus comes along with optical image stabilization, which definitely helps when it comes to photography and video. Just for comparison's sake, here's a video clip of me walking with the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. And as you can see, the Plus has far better stability. This is the main benefit you'll get with optical image stabilization. I'm a fan, but I wish it came as a standard on the iPhone 6. Well, maybe it'll come on the iPhone 6s. 
But as far as video performance goes, the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus kill it again. Though some may be disappointed that you're only getting 1080p video quality here and not 4K like some of the competition on the market. It makes me sad, but I guess I'll get over it. Probably another feature in the works for the iPhone 6S. If you'd like to see the maximum potential of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus camera, I've put together an epic cinematic video test that you can check out using the link down below. It's shocking what this camera is capable of. Next up, we're checking out software. As most iOS users have grown to expect, iOS is pretty snappy and iOS 8 is snappy on both devices. In fact, performance is going to be identical between the two. But to be honest, it's also very similar to how iOS 8 runs on the iPhone 5S. Apple's lack of beefy internal specifications does not affect the software experience. It seems that overall, there's not a huge gap in real-world performance between the iPhone 5S, iPhone 6, and iPhone 6 Plus. Launch bugs aside, iOS is pretty much always a star performer, and if you'd like to know more about iOS 8 or its new features, I'll leave a link down below to a top 20 iOS 8 features video that I published a while back. But this isn't an iOS 8 review, we're talking about the overall experience with the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Apple has fine-tuned iOS 8 to work better with these larger devices by adding a couple of software enhancements to make it easier to navigate. On both devices, we have the addition of reachability, and this new feature allows you to double tap on the home button to move down the user interface. It's a handy feature, but in my opinion, I found it to be easier to just use my other hand. It's not that reachability is bad, I just don't care for it that much, to be honest. On the iPhone 6 Plus, we have full rotation abilities. The home screen and other specific apps can be rotated into landscape mode to bring more of an iPad-like experience to this larger display. It's definitely a nice feature, but it's not groundbreaking, though I did find it useful to be able to pick up the device and use it regardless of its orientation. NFC is also present on both the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, but unfortunately it's only there for a feature that you can't take advantage of yet. Apple Pay is a new mobile payment platform that takes advantage of this hardware and it will be rolling out soon, but until that happens, NFC doesn't really matter. Normally I don't get too in depth with battery life, but it is important to point out a couple of things about these two devices. Battery life is fantastic on the iPhone 6 Plus. Because of its larger size, there's a larger battery and it definitely shows. I've seen usage times of up to five to six hours with pretty heavy use. Unfortunately, the iPhone 6 isn't as good as the iPhone 6 Plus, but one thing is very clear. No matter which one of these two devices you choose, Apple has finally managed to put together a set of phones with all day battery life. So which device is right for you? Well, that's going to depend on a lot of factors. I've laid out most of the information in my official comparison between the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6, and the iPhone 6 Plus. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll leave a link down below. If you're a fan of larger displays, I'd go with the iPhone 6 Plus. If not, then the iPhone 6 is for you. For me, I have to side with the iPhone 6. Don't get me wrong, the 6 Plus is great with its display, battery life, and the optical image stabilization, but I need a device that's a bit more pocketable, and I'm willing to sacrifice a few features for that. If you're currently rocking an iPhone 5S, well, you might just want to wait until next year's iPhone. You still have a very capable device, but let me know which iPhone is your favorite down in the comments section below. Do you prefer the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 6 Plus? Be sure to leave this video video a thumbs up if you enjoyed my review and also feel free to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching everybody. This is Dom and have a great day.